The All India Tennis Association was constituted eight years before the Board of Cricket Control in India came into being in 1920. The All India Tennis Association operates all of the Indian national representative tennis sides, including the India Davis Cup, the India Fed Cup, and youth sides as well. IITA is also responsible for organizing and hosting tennis tournaments within India and scheduling the home international fixtures. It is the governing body of tennis in India. However, in the past many years, IITA has earned a reputation for itself which is hardly helpful to the upliftment of tennis players in India. The IITA finds itself embroiled in needless controversies time and again, badly damaging its reputation as a body that can lead Indian tennis into greater glories. Hi and welcome. You are watching TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host Tribhuvan and in this video, I will shed light on the absolute apathy of ITA towards tennis and why the body needs to be reformed immediately. In the latest controversy, which has cast doubts on the ability of ITA to keep its act together, Sumit Nagal has gone into feud with the body over his refusal to compete in the upcoming Davis Cup tie against Finland. On August 28, Nagal had written to ITA that a hip injury would not allow him to compete against Finland because playing on hard courts could increase the severity of his injury. However, Nagpal continues to compete on the ATP Challenger Tour. Therefore, in response, the ITA has bought action against its player. It said, to see our player Sumit Nagal playing other tournaments and not playing Davis Cup is upsetting. We are definitely going to take this matter up once we are back. We want to see him in the Davis Cup team. Let's see what appropriate action we can take once we are back. We expect our top players to make themselves available. Meanwhile, Sasi Kumar Mukund also declined to play the event. The ITA must ask itself why its players are not competing in premier Davis Cup event and why the body is having to respond to inner tensions publicly. The ITA has quite the habit of splashing itself all over the media, ultimately hurting the players' confidence and interest in tennis as a whole. For many years now, the ITA has proven to be a useless organization whose only task is to take down players publicly not provide them with all resources which they require, function as a lethargic bureaucratic den and deprive Indian tennis of the opportunity to flourish. Not very long ago, India's former number one tennis player Somdev Devarman had launched a scathing attack against the ITA, much like every other tennis player does during their career. Devarman probed, I want to ask, what is your vision for Indian tennis and how will you accomplish it? Leave the government aside, they are not tennis experts. Do you think you have done a good job? I don't want to attack anyone. I am just asking straightforward questions. These were all valid questions to which the ITA had no answers. Somdev Devarman was not the first person to come down after the ITA. Devarman had directed anger at the ITA after the government slashed funding for the Center of Excellence for Tennis. After Devarman, Jeevan Nedu Chesin, who had played the 2019 Australian Open men's double, brought took on the ITA. He lamented how the ITA was not fulfilling the needs of Indian tennis players who were suffering from a perpetual scarcity of resources, thus affecting their performance. He said, the ITA helped me in my juniors, but I haven't got anything since. And that's when the real test of your tennis career starts. According to The Bridge, a player who is within the top 50 in the global ranking has an annual expense of $200,000 to $500,000. For instance, Somdev Devanman, whose career lasted for 9 years, made only $1.5 million. For an average top 50 player who makes, say, $2 million, $0.75 to $1.5 million would be spent on a coach. The rest of the money is spent on physios, travel, food and equipment. Needless to say, an Indian player can't survive with such financial constraints. Yet, the IDA time and again has failed to provide players with all they require to excel. In July this year, tennis player Rohan Bopana slammed the All India Tennis Association for playing with the careers of players and he went on to label the federation incompetent. Bopana slammed the ITA for not ensuring the entry of him and Sumit Nagal in Tokyo Olympics. Rohan Bupana, to prove his point, even shared an alleged call recording with ITA Secretary General Anil Dhupar 
in which the latter can be heard saying that the International Tennis Federation had accepted the entries of Bhopan and Sumit Nagal for the Tokyo Olympics. In a tweet, Bhopana said, Either Secretary General blankly lying saying ITF accepted the entry. Stop lying to everyone and it's time for a change. It's been 50 plus years all players have suffered thanks to the Federation's incompetence. In 2012, veteran tennis star Mahesh Bhupati accused the ITA of resorting to a divide and rule policy and said its dictatorial attitude will be harmful to the failure of Indian tennis. He accused the ITA of playing dirty politics and creating a rift among the players, particularly between him and Leander Pace. Back then, the well-known tennis player had said, As far as I am concerned, I was always banned by the ITA. They never supported anything I did for the sport. Only when they couldn't do without me and they needed the doubles point in Davis Cup, I got the email. Bhupati was speaking in the context of him being banned for two years by the ITA. He also accused the ITA of stooping so low that it changed its very constitution to ensure that he was not able to run any event in India without them being a part of it. Mahesh Bhupati, as is largely known, has been at the forefront of training budding talent and organizing tennis events in India. Yet, instead of supporting him, Aita made sure that his efforts were jeopardized. The Aita requires an overhaul and a reconstructing. It is simply unfit and unmotivated to serve the best interests of Indian tennis and perhaps even compromised. For decades now, the Aita has made the life hell for tennis players who are hounded to an extent that they are forced to reveal their horrors to the media. They are not funded well and they are left to fend for themselves. How many Indians know the names of tennis players currently at the top of the game in India? Not many. The last of tennis players which Indian memory still houses are the likes of Leander Pace and Mahesh Bhupati, which itself has much to do with the feud between the two which received ample media coverage. The most widely known Indian tennis player is of course Sanya Mirza, but these are pretty much players of the past now. What has the ITA done to popularize tennis in India? What has it done to tap into the talent and nurture it? Not much. According to the All India Tennis Association, in Davis Cup ties between 1921 and 29, India defeated, among others, France, Romania, Holland, Belgium, Spain, and Greece. Top Indian players like Salim, Fezzi Brothers, Kota Ramaswamy, and Krishna Prasad defeated a large number of ranked European players and teams to bring glory to the nation. In the 1960s, the sport witnessed the golden era. Ramanathan Krishnan earned his highest seeding, number 4 in Wimbledon in 1962. In the Davis Cup, India repeatedly became the zonal champion. Ramanathan Krishnan along with Premjit Lal, S.P. Mishra, Jaydeep Mukherjee and R.K. Khanna as the non-playing captain steered India to the Cup Finals in 1966. Why has India not been able to replicate such historical glory in recent years? It is because the players are constantly at odds with the governing body which seems hell-bent on ensuring that tennis in the country is inhibited. The government must step in and ensure the ITA is cleaned up. Indian tennis can no longer be allowed to suffer due to the ineptitude of a single body.